Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Ali Jeter. And I'm Rob Riches. Here's your news now. To get to the top of any job occupation, it's all about whom you know and making a great impression. Our own Christine Semptonfelter sat down with Co-op Education and Career Services Assistant Director Samantha Gill to talk to her about the best ways to network and about the largest professional networking site, LinkedIn. Networking involves connecting with different people, uh, commonly across different industries, to get your name out there, um, get to know different people, because you never know who you're going to come in contact with. LinkedIn is kind of a professional Facebook, for lack of a better description. Um, it's a network of thousands of industry professionals that vary across all kinds of industries. Uh, you know, business, communication, marketing, anything and everything you can think of. Generally speaking, someone has a LinkedIn account. And you definitely only want to put your professional profile up on LinkedIn. It's, it's unlike Facebook and the fact that you don't want to have, you know, pictures or videos or anything like that. I highly recommend Cabrini students creating a LinkedIn account. It's an excellent way to connect with industry professionals. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to know someone to, you know, friend them on LinkedIn. It's not awkward. So I definitely would recommend uh, students get started early and create those accounts because when they're actually looking for a job, you can utilize LinkedIn to connect with different people at various companies. Uh, it's a great way to research companies. Sometimes they post jobs through LinkedIn. And actually, Cabrini College has an alumni group that students are encouraged to join as well. So for instance, I've had students post um, on the Cabrini College alumni group a discussion saying, you know, I'm looking for an internship in accounting for the spring or the summer. Does anyone know of any openings? And then Cabrini alum can actually respond to that discussion topic and say, yes, we have a position opening. Contact us at this number or something, you know, the saying, the it's not what you know, it's who you know. It's kind of a combination of both. So by networking, you can really uh, get to learn about different individuals and have them learn about you. The local Wawa in Bryn Mawr was robbed at gunpoint. An undisclosed amount of money was stolen and a store employee was injured. According to the Radnor Township Police Department, one man was armed with a handgun. The robbery seems to be linked to another robbery that took place on Lansdowne Avenue. The subjects were last seen fleeing the scene. Police have released photos of the two. Pennsylvania Governor Corbett reports his plan for steep cuts in state aid to higher education for 2013. The plan consists of a 30% cut to state universities such as Penn State and Temple University. Corbett claims state-backed schools should reduce campus operation costs rather than raise tuition. Community colleges would see a 4% cut. The state's biggest universities are ready to fight to maintain state support after having budget cuts of 20% just last year. They urge the public to stand behind them. About 40 demonstrators, including members of the Phil Occupy Philly movement, assembled outside the Philadelphia headquarters of Comcast Corporation. They demanded that mainstream media add Al Jazeera to its cable offerings. Al Jazeera has an English language channel that aggressively covers the Middle East. Philadelphia police and Comcast security banned demonstrations from entering the building. The protesters brought petitions with over 20,000 signatures calling for more diverse media in the Philadelphia area. And that was your trip around the block. Now let's go around the nation with Rob. Governor Chris Gregoire signed a bill legalizing marriage for gay and lesbian couples, making Washington the latest state to sanction same-sex marriage. The law will go into effect in June. Same-sex marriage continues to become legalized across the nation as New Jersey State Senate voted 24 to 16 in favor of a similar bill. Despite Governor Chris Christie's vow to veto the legislation, the New Jersey bill will go to the State Assembly, which is scheduled to vote later this week. China's Vice President Xi Jinping was welcomed to the White House earlier this week. His week-long visit consists of meetings discussing Washington concerns over unfair trade practices, the value of China's currency, and human rights. President Obama believes it is vital that Washington maintains a strong relationship with Beijing. So far, Mr. Xi emphasized active steps towards the United States' concerns over trade. The stresses of budget cuts are booming to Mars, quite literally. 
NASA is in line for about a 40% budget cut. Moon missions and several Mars missions with the European Space Agency are now off the table. Most, expensive are, most expenses are spent on the development of a revolutionizing telescope that is predicted to change our understanding of the universe. Unfortunately, the development is already $6 billion over budget and years delayed. NASA's current life expectancy is rather uncertain. Now let's go to Allie for your trip around the world. A miracle rescue was made in southern Kosovo after an avalanche buried dozens of homes. Rescue workers pulled out a young girl who was trapped under 33 feet of snow. Nine people are, were reported dead and one person is still missing. Romanian officials work around the clock to rescue stranded villagers. Kosovo is having its harshest winter in decades as a series of snowstorms and extreme cold have killed over 500 civilians so far. Every day, Syrian civilians must plot out every step they take, even if they are just trying to get a loaf of bread or trying to seek medical care for the wounded. Snipers are positioned at every street corner, and tanks and government checkpoints flood the villages. Student dropout rates at universities are skyrocketing because students are surrounded with deaths of loved ones. According to CNN News, Syrians understand that this stage there will be more deaths endured through this bloody battle and even more challenges after reg the regime topples. A pro-democracy protest turned chaotic in the city of Bahrain as protesters struggled to get to the monument and Pearl Roundabout. According to BBC News, police fired rubber bullets and tear gas at youths who then retaliated by hurling back patrol bombs and stones. Most demonstrators and human rights groups involved in the protests fight for democratic reforms. The violent crackdown in the Middle East continues. And that was your trip around the world. Now let's go to Jimmy for this week's Tech Connection. The Apple rumor mill is now churning at full speed. All Things D, The Next Web, and The New York Times all recently reported that Apple will introduce a next generation iPad in the first week of March. Specifically, the Times corroborates claims of a faster processor and a truly amazing screen that is nearly identical in appearance to the iPad 2. These latest rumors come on the heels of Apple's stock price breaching the $500 mark for the first time. As of this week, Apple is worth more than $469 billion, making it the most valuable company in the world by a significant margin. The issue of cell phones and the radiation they give off has been a controversial issue in the media in past years. According to the National Cancer Institute and the Journal of the American Medical Association, cellular phones emit radio frequency energy, a form of non-ionizing electromagnetic radiation. This radiation can be absorbed by tissues closest to where the phone is held. Studies thus far do not show any link between the cell phone use and cancers of the brain, nerves, or other tissues. Associate Professor of Biology Dr. David Dunbar spoke with us about the effects and consequences of cell phone radiation. More obviously, more people are using cell phones nowadays, and so my understanding is is that it, it appears to be a slight, gives you a slight increased cancer risk, the cell phone radiation, based on the studies that recently came out. Now, with the fact that lots of people are using cell phones, right now what we know is like short-term risks are minimal, long-term risks over time we don't know because they just, we can't do those studies until a couple decades from now. Like young, like babies, young toddlers, I would say they should probably have very minimal exposure to them. Older kids, you know, minimal exposure to cell phones and stuff is probably okay, but uh, not excessive cell phone use. The type of radiation, my understanding is that come from cell phones, it's a very weak form of radiation. So if it does penetrate the cells, it doesn't penetrate them to a large degree. There's other forms of radiation uh, that, uh, for instance, that are used in nuclear bombs that can do a lot of damage. The other thing is, is we're, right now as we talk, we're being bombarded by radiation from outer space. But most of that radiation is weak radiation. It goes through our bodies and we're fine. But what I would say is short-term risks are probably pretty minimal, although they're there, right? There's risk for almost everything. Uh, but long-term risk, we don't know. That's all I have for now. I stay plugged in right here to bring you the latest tech news. Now back to Allie and Rob at the news desk. Let's go to Mary Kate McCann for this week's sports update. The 2011-2012 regular season for the Gabrini College swim team ended with an outstanding performance. While the men fell short 107-54, to the women's team defeated Ocean County College by a score of 110-60. to 
On February 16th, they would travel to Grove City for the three-day event for the 2012 AMCC Championship Meet. The Cabrini College men and women's basketball team have both made it to the playoffs. The men are going into their last regular season game against Keystone with an undefeated record of 17-0. They will host a semifinal game on Tuesday, February 21st at Near Knee Fieldhouse. The Lady Cavs will be traveling to Gwen and Mercy College to close their final regular season game with a record of 9-6 in CSAC. As for the 76ers, they are ranked number one in the Atlantic Division and third in the Eastern Conference. They advanced their record to 20-6 after sending the Bobcats to their 15th straight loss. Tip-off for the Sixers' next game will be this Wednesday at 7 against the Magic. That's all I have for you this week. Let's hope the winner teams keep advancing in the playoffs to make it to the CSAC championship. Now back to Ali and Rob. Now let's go to Holly for your entertainment update. This past week, the entertainment industry lost one of its greatest talents. Whitney Houston died suddenly at the age of 48, the day before the biggest night in music, the Grammy Awards. Houston was staying at the Beverly Hilton Hotel when she was found dead in her hotel room on the fourth floor. That night, she was scheduled to attend Clive Davis's annual pre-Grammy party, as she did every year. Although she died only a few hours before the start of the party, it continued on as scheduled. Houston is set to be laid to rest on Saturday, February 18th in her home state of New Jersey. Adele is now the reigning queen of the Grammys. She won all six awards that she was nominated for at the 54th annual ceremony, including Record of the Year, Song of the Year, and Album of the Year for her album, 21. My favorite part of the night was when Adele took to the stage and sang her celebrated hit, Rolling in the Deep. It was her first live performance since having throat surgery in early 2011. I had the opportunity to interview different people around campus to see what their favorite part of the show was. Let's take a look. I'm Holly Prendergast, live on location to see what the Cabrini community thought about the 2012 Grammys. My favorite part of the Grammy was the fact that Adele brought home all six awards that she was nominated for. Because I'm obsessed with the The part of the Grammys was at the end when Bruce Springsteen, Dave Grohl, and Paul McCartney were all on stage playing together. That was pretty great. My favorite part of the Grammys was Taylor Swift because I love the song Mean and I just love Taylor Swift. And she just looks so beautiful in her little like country dress. It was just very beautiful. And it was a great time. That's all I have for you this week. Back to the news desk. That's all we have for you this week. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and like us on Facebook. I'm Allie Jeter. And I'm Rob Riches. Have a great week, Cabrini.